Did you see that? Focus stacking in a single click. A new extension for Luminar Neo that I was able to beta test. Speaking of which, Skylum, the makers of Luminar, reached out to me for a collaboration and I could not be happier. I've been using their software for years now and it's my go-to plugin for all things Beyond Lightroom. So let's talk focus stacking, why and when you may use it in landscape photography. Let's go. We often pair macro photography with focus stacking, right? But it has purpose for landscapes. This occurs when foreground subjects are much closer to your lens than the background. So if you focused on the foreground element, sharpness will gradually fall off on everything beyond it. Let's take a look at an image I made with a telephoto lens that still required me to focus stack if I desired to be in focus. I shot this at 175 millimeters at f13. Um, and I put my focus point on the foreground tree, which is the star of the show. Now, if we zoom in here, you immediately see that everything beyond this tree is out of focus. The sharpness gradually rolls, falls off, and everything behind it gets soft. You can see this tree over here, this as well as this, and everything back here. You may like this, you may like this effect. You may not want to sharpen anything beyond this tree. Maybe that's the story you're trying to tell here. And there is enough information here. You can clearly identify the other three trees as for what they are. So that may be the story you're going for. But regardless, you're on location. You may as well you're, make another image with a focus point beyond the foreground element so that you have sharpness and then you can make that choice when you're back home and you may or may not want the focus stack if you get my drift. So let me show you the other image um, that I took which is right here. If you look, zoom in, you can see that our foreground tree is no longer tack sharp as it was but if we look beyond it we can see that the grass, we can see the tree and all three trees for that matter are sharp. So we have two images. Again, being on location, you may as well make the images. It's something to think about. You need to do this on location so that when you get back home, you can go ahead and focus stack if need be. So this is how easy it is to focus stack in Luminar Neo. We're gonna take these two images and we're gonna drag them over to the focus stack and you can see they're showing two images. If you're doing something that's a little bit more complex, if you're doing macro photography, you may have 20 images, 30, 40 images. You can do up to 100 images in the focus stacking extension. And you can set a reference image uh, that you'd like to use. By default, Luminar Neo, if you should click on the gear here, it's going to go ahead and choose the middle image. Now, I only have two images here, so it doesn't really matter which one I choose in this particular case. So anyway, have your images in there, you click stack, and this is going to take care of everything for you. Now Luminar Neo is going to create a focus stacking folder, which you can see right down here, and it's automatically going to create that image in that folder. So here is our image right here. This was an older one that I did with a little post-processing. All right, so let's take a look at this focus stacked image. Let's just zoom in really quick. All right, we can see that our foreground tree is sharp. Background tree is sharp. All our all our trees are sharp. Our image has sharpness throughout. That simple. How cool is that? So, two words. We're done. It's that simple, really. But while we have this image open, let's go ahead and take a quick look at some of the other AI features in Neo. So, uh, let's start with the erase tool. So, if we go over here to erase we can go ahead and select objects that we want to erase. So you can increase your brush size by the left and right brackets on your keyboard, or you can simply do it right here. Um, it's about the size I want. I want to get rid of these two dandelions right here. I also want to get rid of this little patch. Not too bad, but maybe a little distracting my foreground. And increase my brush size, and let's get rid of this stake and this little patch of grass. So as you can see, I'm making multiple selections here. When you're done, simply hit erase, and look at that, done. We are ready to go. While this video focused on focus stacking, let's quickly cover a new AI tool in Neo that I am 
loving. The Relight tool will quickly adjust tonal colors with depth and brightness without having to create a series of linear gradients and adjustments. So let's take our image here, use E for edit, or you can hit the button up here, and you're gonna use the Relight tool. Now you see it's a simple matter of three sliders. So what I would normally do with this image is I would create a linear grad and I would bring down the tonal colors, I'd bring down the shadows basically in the foreground so that I am taking the viewer into the scene where I want the eye to rest in this general area right here of this guy. Um, and that would of course require a few steps, but with the Relight tool, I can literally just take my brightness near, bring down my shadows, and look at that, I already got the effect with one slider. Now the depth tool is really nice. Let me just bring this down to the max so that you can see the full effect here. I can take the depth and I can adjust, almost like a, a, um, a linear grade, how far in I want the effect to go. So you can see the difference here. This is really good stuff. So I'm gonna bring this back down somewhere around here and before, after. That's exactly what I wanted with a series of two sliders in seconds. All right, so you can also use the advanced tool. Now the dehalo, we, we won't use that in this image because there's, there's no haloing around my edges or in pockets of contrasty sections of light and shadow. But if you did have it, this would go ahead and adjust, try to clean up any haloing you have around your edges. But the warmth near and far, I will use the warmth far. And what will happen here is I will bring um, a little bit more drama uh, to the midsection of the image around the area that I want the eye to, to fall on. So if I take the warm far, I'm going to just crank this so you can see what it's doing. All right, but all I want is just a tad bit, something like that. We'll do it before and after. And you can see I added a little warmth right in this area, maybe even a little bit more. <laughs> And that's it, done. So that's a really nice tool to play with. Now, I'm not gonna get into it in this video to be mindful of your time, but all these tools all have the masking feature. So you have the mask AI, you could go ahead and create your radial, your linear, or just a simple brush and do some masking effects if you'd like. But most of the time you don't even have to. You can save the time and just have the, the AI tool itself do the magic for you as you've seen here. So if we look, we have a before we started anything to the after and final, final product, final finished edit, I should say. If you think Neo will fit your workflow, you can save $10 at checkout using my coupon code HOODSTA. This applies to the Explore and Pro versions. I'll get a commission for the sale, which helps support the channel with no additional cost to you. Simply use the link in the description. So what's the takeaway? I'd say Luminar Neo offers a fast workflow with some powerful tools and impressive AI features, which are just going to get better. There's bugs and little things that I think need tweaking and some missing features that I'd like in my, my personal workflow, but I'll cover that in a different video to be mindful of your time. So I'll see you next week for episode four of the Adirondacks in Autumn and more silly adventures with my friends and I. 